This statue to Peter Pan, the boy who never grew up, is a great place to talk about saving for children. In the real world, of course, children do grow up and they need as much financial help as parents, family and friends can afford. Like Peter, you can sprinkle a bit of financial fairy dust to help them fly when they're older. There are six main ways to save money on behalf of children. You can divide these between accounts that may be taxable and accounts that are more tax efficient. You've also got a choice between saving in cash at the bank or building society or investing in stocks and shares through a fund manager. Stocks and shares are riskier in the short term, but over the long term, they should grow a lot more. Don't be too cautious when saving for the long-term future of a child. Remember, their great enemy is the captain hook of inflation, and you have to speculate to accumulate in order to beat him. Your first option is to open a savings account at a bank or building society. Children can start to manage their own accounts when they're seven, which is a great way to learn about money. A few accounts offer decent rates of interest on monthly savings or cash lump sums, but generally rates are low. There are also restrictions on how much money you can put in and how much money you can withdraw. Like adults, children can be taxed, although in the 2014-15 financial year they can earn up to £10,000 income tax-free. However, money given to a child by a parent that generates more than £100 interest in a year will be taxed at the parent's main rate. Interest from bank accounts is normally paid with 20% tax deducted. You can reclaim the interest or arrange for tax not to be deducted. Ask your bank or building society for the relevant tax form. Let's look at the tax efficient accounts that avoid capital gains and personal income taxes. The best known is the Junior ISA or Individual Savings Account. You can put up to £4,000 a year here, split any way you like between cash and stocks and shares. Only adults can open a Junior ISA, but the money belongs to the child who can withdraw it when they reach 18. Child trust funds have been replaced by junior ISAs to which they are very similar. You can't open new ones. Introduced in 2002, they were made available to children born between September of that year and January 2011. The government kick-started the accounts with vouchers of 50 and 250 pounds, with family members able to top up the accounts to 4,000 pounds a year. Children's bonds from National Savings Investments are cash-based, five-year investment plans backed by the government. You can put up to £3,000 in each issue. They pay a fixed rate of interest once a year, tax-free. A child owns the bonds, but only a parent, guardian or grandparent can buy the bond and hold them until the child turns 16. These accounts from mutually owned friendly societies are often overlooked, but make a useful addition to anyone saving for children. The money goes into a stocks and shares fund, but there are fewer investment options than with a junior ISA. You can save up to £270 a year or up to £25 a month, but you have to keep the plan going for at least 10 years to qualify for the tax breaks. Many people are surprised that you can set up a pension for a child and put money into it until they're 18. Although the child can't access the money until he or she reaches 55, the fact that the money is invested for such a long time means that it can grow into a really significant sum. The most that a parent or grandparent can put into a child's pension is £3,600 a year. But because the government gives you free money in the form of tax relief, you only have to put in £2,800. And 80 pounds. If you started saving as soon as the child was born, he or she could end up with a pension pot of over £100,000. This could grow to over a million pounds by the time they reach 65 without them putting any more money in it. What a great gift. That's one that would make even Peter Pan want to grow up.